Hey folks, I'm here with Jamie at the dugout in Marietta, Georgia, and uh, we're getting ready to do an install. You got a demo boat that's going to be, we're going to have one that's going to be the Hobie Outback, and then another one will be the Hobie Pro Angler. Pro Angler 14, that's correct. But we're going to put a very unique foot control steering system on the, on the Outback today. I'm going to show you step by step how that's done. So, let's, uh, I want to just show you look at, at the selection i know jamie's gonna say I, I i'm down in stock but yeah we don't have what we want but we're working on it throughout covid no one has stuff and i was here maybe i don't know a month and a half ago and i roll in and you've got stuff everywhere so yeah we try to keep you know 60 to 100 units in stock at all times in hobie well i think you've had the better selection of of any shop that i've been in this year thank you and it's been a crazy year so let's go ahead and walk in we'll see this cool shop there's duke so real nice selection of baits that are good for local fisheries for sure but we're going to walk straight through to what is you know your your actual it's it's a bait company you got all these tanks with all sorts of live bait here and this is what we're going to work on today so overall let's take a look at the like what we're putting in here normally when you do foot control steering you're using these kind of sliding foot pegs uh, I, I decided to when I first did mine um, I decided to do something a little bit different and I worked with Trey Leach at Innovative Sportsman to develop what he refers to as the bat wing. So this has a post that goes in the sail mast and we're gonna connect steering lines to that. So let's walk up here and take a look. So not everyone knows on Hobie kayaks that that's actually for putting a sail in. So you you know put the sail mast in and it catches wind and off you go. Um, but I'm using it, I'm just, taking advantage of something that's already there because when when I set up my Outback, what I didn't want to do is to crowd the, the range of motion of the Mirage Drive here. Um, so instead of putting the sliding foot pegs on the side, I put this forward of, uh, of that range of motion. So I know mine is custom to me. It's actually a little further forward but that's that's the basic concept is that this is beyond how far forward the mirage drive is going to travel uh and it's out of the way so from there we're going to run lines um, we use the spectra cord it'll come forward go through the hull i'm going to install a a pulley up underneath there it's it's going to be a uh a yak attack stealth pulley will go up underneath there the line will take a U-turn and head to the back. And in order to have good access here, um, I'm, I'm gonna cut this out. We actually have a, a hatch that I'm gonna be installing and I'll teach you how to do that with the, uh, I'm gonna use a Dremel and a, there's a cutting tool there to put this hatch in so I have good access to the inside of the hall. I actually did mine without cutting the hatch out, but I think I wanna, do the hatch on this one just to make it easy because we're going to be drilling holes here and here roughly the width of the torpedo steering triangle and uh and running tubes in there so that we run the spectra cord and the lines up there so that's a just a quick overview let's go ahead and dive in and uh i think i'm going to start by working on the hatch so I was joking on, I think it was on the, uh, the Yak Attack Facebook page, uh, Rigging the Dream, the other day. And I, I, I think I put a poll out there. Have you drilled a hole in a kayak yet? And, and I think it was something like 30% had. And the analogy I used is, is it's sort of like getting a tattoo. You're very apprehensive about it the first time and you... You know, it's it's a little bit uncomfortable and painful the first time you do it. Um, but then once you do it, you see the results and you're happy with it and, and you want to do it again and again. You want to drill more holes in your kayak and put more stuff and, and rigging gets fun at that point. Um, 
putting a hatch in is sort of a higher level because we're getting a, getting ready to put a a hole that big in there, and that's a little unnerving for sure, is to have a hole that big. But with enough silicone and really doing a good job with the Dremel, uh, you really shouldn't be fearful. So I'm just gonna give myself a guide. That's what's gotta, I missed the part. That's what's gotta come out. And basically, once that's out, I will get this down in there and drill holes for this to come up through. And then this hatch is gonna go on top. So that's it overall. And this is the part that people are terrified of. <laughs> All right, so we got this plug popped out. Make sure you hold on to this. Uh, this can be pretty valuable material. If you ever, you know, gouge a hole deep and deep enough in one of these, uh, the, although with the Hobie kayak, it's pretty thick stuff. It's it's tough to do. It still does happen. This is valuable for uh, just hold on to this material. If you ever need to do any plastic welding, you got that plug. So um, we've opened this up. I do want to point out a mistake that we made. I always want people to learn from my mistakes and uh, with this this cutting blade. Unfortunately, I severed the the rudder line. So I, we're gonna have to replumb or rerun the uh, the rudder line, which is just this stuff right here. Uh, fortunately, it'll be an easier job because we got this big hole in the kayak. Uh, right now, I'm just taking the this little sanding wheel this dremel attachment and just i've actually gone around it and just trimmed it already um and i'm just going to take some 150 grit sandpaper and just finish that off and then i'll be able to uh to get this this part on there as a guide for how do we want this position i think i got to take a little bit more off looks like uh, to get that down in there. But when I'm done cutting this big enough hole in there, I'll drop that in there and use the Dremel hole or the uh, the Sharpie to mark where um, where we want these holes. But I'm going to keep going with this till I get a hole that's big enough. Pop it in there, man. Nice. Uh, Nice snug fit there. So, go ahead. Do, do we have it on there straight? Straight. So we got our, our threads ring. I don't know what that's called, but that's that's the backing. Um, we got our holes drilled out, and I'm just going to put a nice bead of silicone all the way around. Then we're going to slap the uh, the gaskets actually already up underneath that rim right there, so that's ready to go when we seat it down. And that'll squish out when it when we tighten down. Then we'll, you know, we'll clean it off as we we'll wipe the excess out of there. But getting a nice bead, the silicone, especially over the hole, is a good deal. That's what you want to do. So we got our bead of silicone on there. We're just gonna tighten down. All right, we got the rudder back to uh, to to functional again, and it'll 
come up and go down. The point is, if you're cutting this, watch out for that line. I didn't, I cut it. Jamie's been there before and they can fix it. So, but try not to do that. All right, let's move on to the other part. We're gonna come up here and we're actually gonna drill some holes somewhere up in here. Uh, when Trey Leach makes these, he calls them bat wings for foot control steering, specifically for the Outback, he does them for a certain leg length. Mine were a little further forward. Uh, we just did somewhere in the middle of the road here. Uh, but that sort of dictates where you're you're placing the uh, the Akatak stealth pulley. So I'm gonna kind of map that out and uh, we'll start drilling some holes up here. So what we're doing up here is we're creating an entry point for the, the spectra cord, uh, which is gonna leave here and we'll put an S beaner on there and it'll it'll run you know into and I've already made one of them and I'll show you how I make this just a little sh short section of the tubing here which it's just this this uh, rudder tubing that uh, innovative sportsman sells out by the foot uh, and it's gonna go to the it's gonna go to the stealth pulley uh, which is gonna be tucked up underneath there on the inside and the spectra cord will leave there, go through here. I gotta open up that one a little bit more. Go around this, and then it'll travel to the back of the boat, and, and then we'll we'll get into that. But to clean it up, just so we don't have, you know, two nuts, two lock nuts just sitting up there looking like, why are they there? Uh, we're gonna put this this pad eye. It's just a Yak Attack pad eye on on their top side. So it, at least it looks, it, it actually adds a uh, a dual purpose to something that otherwise looks like, all right, what's underneath there? Um, I'll get that in there and then, you know, who, who knows if you if you wanted to uh, to store a fish bag up here and run a bungee between the two or whatever you want to do. Um, you can utilize that storage and have, I guess, a bungee going across if you wanted to. It just, to me, it looks cleaner. So we'll go ahead and and uh, put the, the stealth pulley in there and then I'll show you how we drill, uh, how we make that. In fact, I'll do that now and we'll put it all together. So I'm only cutting a short section of this to to work with because once the spectra hits the the pulley it's got to be um you can't have that there so because the surface that we're that we're um putting this on it's going to enter at an angle like that we're going to cut it at that angle So we've cut it at the angle. And then we're gonna flare this out at an angle. And then Jamie's gonna answer his phone. It rings all day long. It's not a complaint, man. It's just, <laughs> you're a busy dude. All right, as that flares out, heats up we're just smushing that a little bit and it just creates a little bit of a lip so that when you're let's see if that shows up against there does that look good mm -hmm. it creates enough of a lip so that when we're when we're done drilling the hole at an angle it slides in there and we'll put some silicone there and it'll it'll pull down in there so this is roughly what we're, we're looking at, a very short section of tube here that's going to go through and our stealth pulley that's going to be on the inside and then this will be on the top side. So I'll go ahead and put the pulley in. And... Yeah, 
think the short one goes there. And I gotta get my screwdriver. There it is. I tell you what, I'm gonna make it easy on myself and kind of thread that, thread the hole that I made from the top side in. That way, it's happy when it's coming up through the bottom and grabbing. But you know not much to it so the wheel is is in the front of the boat because it's taking a u-turn based on that which it's going to come out there if i get things lined up i go a little bit further and it'll be just you know just enough to have it come through the pad eye and grab that that nut that will just drop down in there so I'll lay that there and just put some downward pressure on there so it grabs its threads all right I'll just go ahead and do the other side the same way So this is the somewhat tricky part, and we got the pulley there. That's the center of the pulley. The line is gonna go forward here. So it's gonna be roughly, we want it coming out about there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. But here's the tricky part. If I just take this, and, and then drill a hole at this perpendicular angle, it's, it's gonna bind there, it's gonna rub. So what I'm doing is that I'm coming in and I, it's almost like I'm using the, uh, the drill bit as a mill for the first little bit. It's just kind of scratching, but this is the angle that I want going in. starting to push forward because I got enough of a groove that it's gonna it's gonna settle there so I've only been pushing down on with that angle and now I'm gonna push forward with it and hopefully it starts grabbing if it doesn't I'm gonna keep going with the sideways pressure That's it. All right. So that's going to lay flat there. I think I have to hit that again with a lighter to, to really smooth it out. So it's easier to, to put this in ahead of time. Just because it's such a short section, I went ahead and put the Spectre in there. Now, I will tell you, normally I only ever use the silicone. But because it's such a short piece and there's no length to this going that way that keeps it from from really recoiling and, and coming pushing back up in there like I'll show you what I mean um, you have a pretty good good chance of this even though it's a it's a tight fit of it popping up during use so I'm doing something that's that I don't normally do and I got the the gorilla glue in there and I'm going to just give it a couple drops, jam it in there, and I'm still going to use, I'm still going to silicone on top of that, but this is one of those rare instances where I will use, you know, crazy glue. And the reason is that it's, you really just don't want it popping out. But I did a pretty good job sealing that up. And then just to 
crazy glue is not a watertight sort of thing, so I am just burying it. Get a bead of silicone around that, and that's good to go. So we've already had this for a 300 different demo boat, and we're going to be doing something, a couple different things. Um, in particular, we're going to have the Innovative Sportsman. This is the aluminum steering triangle. It's a lot, it's a lot tougher than the plastic one uh, that it comes with. Um, and we'll eventually get this, this bracket on there. It's nice we got these these threaded inserts will pop those plugs out here in a second and it'll go right there. But why I'm putting this on there is to show that you want your, you want the the lines, the, the spectra cord and they also the little section of tubing that we're gonna put in to come out and I'm gonna remove this just to show you. So, it's going to be wide enough that it clears and it isn't going to rub on the uh, on the the bracket here. And I've you know I've learned over the years that roughly the width of the steering triangle is where you want want it to exit the hull. So for this particular boat, I think it's going to be right next to that crease and right next to that crease, maybe even up towards the top a little bit. So there. And there is where we're going to put a little, again, a little section of tubing, and uh, and the spectra cord will come out there. So I've already cut this this short section that really just protects, you know, the the uh, spectra. Although I don't think the spectra would cut through there. We just want to seal that up um, so water is not coming in there. But I already got one of them through, and I'm going to show you with the other side how I did it. So we cut this this hatch here, which allows us to get up in there. But if you look at the side of the the boat and where it is. And I got long arms. I can tell you that my fingertips are only getting to about there and they need to get to there. So the way you're doing it is I'm using a short section of this, this same tubing, but it's, it's a little bit longer. We're going to push that in. We're basically going to be using this as a guide to, to thread. And I'll just leave that there to thread the spectra through and it'll poke out and then we're going to remove that section because I'm I'm just putting a smaller shorter section in there suppose if you wanted to you could leave the same one but all right check out the end it's poking out we'll pull that flush pull this out and then what we're gonna do, and I've, I've already flared out this end the same way I've done before, because we're gonna just stick this on there and I'll probably put the crazy glue, instead of putting it in the hole, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the tubing and it'll seat nicely. I don't want to put it in the hole because I don't want the crazy glue to touch the um, any of the uh, the spectra cord and, and bind it up anywhere. I'm not using a lot. It's really just to keep it in place. Okay. I don't think that's going anywhere. I'll come back later and get a little bit more silicone around there, but we'll do the same thing over here. And then we're ready to put the motor mounts on. And from there, we don't have a whole lot more to do. 
you're putting some night eyes s beaners on up here that's what it looks like that way if you decide that you want to take this off you can take it completely off and, uh, and unclip it here uh, just a real simple moose knot there to get that attached all right, we finished uh, rigging up the rest of it. I kind of fast forward through that just because we've seen that in a lot of other videos that I've done. Um, this one was really easy because you had the four inserts, the mounting bracket bolted right on there. We do have the, um, the aluminum steering triangle from Innovative Sportsman. It's a, ni a nice durable option. Um, finished running the lines and uh, we have our we got the reverse lock and then the motor lift. They go up here to complete and up the motor. So that's doing well. Uh, we got the throttle here. And what I want to show you is the steering, the bat wing. It's getting nice rotation there. So innovative sportsman that wing which is specifically for the hobie outback for foot control steering um you know i'd say if you're anywhere near marietta georgia just just come here come to dugout the guys here have watched me and taken notes and, and know how to do this install if you don't want to cut a hole in your boat to put a hatch in the back if you don't want to mess with what i've shown here let them do it um but for now what I want to do is get this on the water and show you what it looks like, what foot control steering um, on a Hobie Outback looks like. And the uh, nice thing is they got a lake right next to the shop. Um, so I'm going to drag this down there and uh, let you see what that looks like. If you want to come and actually test drive this kayak, please come to the dugout. Uh, this will be the demo boat available for customers to, to come test drive. So it's a really really nice thing that they have a lake right next to uh, the shop here. So, Alright, let's get this thing wet. Okay, here we go. It's rocking and rolling. Nice crisp turning radius either direction. Good deal. That is pretty much turning around within my own length. I mean, it's just, I'm occupying pretty much the, the length of the boat just doing, doing donuts. So, foot control steering on a Hobie Outback. If you want to rig it up, follow the directions we did. If you want it, don't want to rig it up, come to the dugout. Come test it. Test drive it. It's fun. Let's see it. 